All right, I'm gonna do a bit of a walkthrough of the new split boarding stoke binding that I have developed. And the idea of this binding is to have something which is really universal. It can be used on uh, solid boards as well as split boards. Uh, it's gonna be really good for people who either like to adjust their angles and stuff a lot, or for rental operations where you're gonna have all kinds of angles from all different kinds of people, right? So main, main binding, it's uh, what you expect to see from a split board binding, okay? You've got on the back here, tilt for walk and for ride mode over there. We then have this really cool rotating cuff feature over here, rotates around the side, as you can see there, and it gives you more lateral support. So if you're going up something really steep, you need more lateral support, you have that, it rotates around on the side of the binding there like that. It works on a central puck system. Now what's cool about this puck system here is it'll work on a two by four insert system or with these bad boys on a regular split board system. So you would screw these super lightweight adapter plates to the split board here and the pucks would then mount to the center over here. Or if your boards are like mine where you have just a normal insert pattern or you're also putting your bindings on a solid board, you're good to go there. So the way this works, it has a rail system, it has a carbon base, and the reason for the carbon base is so that there's no flex this way at all of binding. That's what ends up cracking rails. You see a lot of rails that break through continued use, and that's all coming down to the whole system having a little bit of flex and move, and the aluminium works until it eventually breaks. So, you open this, you slide it on like that, and now you find your angle. It's very clearly marked, that's 30 degrees, that's 15 degrees, that's zero degrees. This is a regular foot, right? But if you're goofy, it just simply goes on this way, right? If obviously, if you don't want the straps inverted, you just put the bindings around the other way, right? So if you're a rental operation, then it's really easy because you don't have to move your anything around, you're not moving pucks around. This simply just slides onto the board that easy like that, and it closes with that latch and it's secure. This can't come out, the boot is on there, everything is secure. Obviously, these ratchet up like a normal binding over your boots, and then you put this back to ride mode in the back over here. So that's how the system works for adjustments, and it's very clearly marked. So people say, oh, but you gotta find your binding system, your angle every time. I mean, you're doing it anyway. If you have two pucks on the board, you've, you've gotta kinda get it lined up before you slide it on, right? The only difference is on this one that you slide it on first, and then you line it up, and it's that easy. That's how easy it was to find my angle that I always write. So, now we're gonna take this thing and we're gonna go to, we're gonna split the board. So, normal kind of concept as any other board, of course, nothing changes here. Um, oh, the one thing I didn't show you is these overlap on the center line of the board. So when your board is connected, you have, on my boards, I got two connection points here, but on most boards, it'll be just the one. You're overlapping the center line here, you're overlapping the center line here, you're overlapping the center line here, here, and on the ends. Mine are a little bit fancier, but the pucks, because they overlap the center line, and the climbing bracket, the touring bracket, because it also overlaps the center line, your board is way more torsionally stable. So, putting this onto the, uh, uh, um, the touring bracket, it's very simple. You keep this open, this rotates forward like that, comes down, and then you close this, and this closes onto the pin, the center pin of the touring bracket. There's no way for it to come out, right? So this is your usual touring. You then have back here a 10 degree, that's pole activated on the side, and a 15 degree over here, that you could either pull activate from the back here, like that, or you could do it over here as well, on the side, all right? So there's your 15, there's your 10 over here. If I want to put the crampons on, pull this off. The crampon, very simple, simply slides onto the binding like that, into the same grooves that work with the puck. 
and you close it, and there you are. There's the crampons, nice and simple, very effective. And we've given this crampon some rake in the back over here, but it's more vertical in the front, that way when you're on your tiptoes, you have something steep, it's still working efficiently, like that. Very nice, easy to get off there. Once more, when it's time to reconnect your board, Open this, slide it on, I find my angle, which I like, which is 35 degrees. There we go. Slide this on here, the back. If I'm gonna be in really steep stuff, I'll be like at 10 degrees. And if I'm on pretty open ball stuff, like right there, I'll be at 15. And there you go. So this is the Stoke Splitboard Binding. Very excited about this. I didn't try to make the lightest binding in the world. I wanted a reliable binding. I don't want stuff falling apart, falling off, things breaking. I'd rather have 100 grams more weight per foot on the board, and you just don't have the headache of stuff going wrong and just things falling apart. And you spend three hours going up some, you know, some mountain, and you're two thirds of the way up, and something breaks, or on your first two turns, and a rail snaps, and it's just, what's the point? Right, so really the key of this thing was liability and simply ease of use. Like I said, a rental operation, we're gonna do this, and then simply rotate this to the other foot, like that, find the angle, and same thing back here. Nice and easy, find my angle, I'm gonna put it at 10 degrees. There we go. Oh, no. Unstoked, are you?